before we go on there, yeah. thank you guys for uh, joining me on another video. This was this, this one's pretty big. It's pretty pretty fucking big. So as you all know, because the entire industry was rocked today by one foul one just fellow. What do you call it? Fellow swoop, foul swoop, whatever the fuck it is. Some swoop. A foul swipper. And <laughs> fell swoop. Fell, 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 fell swoop. Fell swoop. They just rocked the fucking uh, industry by saying that they bought um, basically the parent company of Bethesda, which means that they own Bethesda and everything under Bethesda, Bethesda for $7.5 billion. Now, I want to mention this because people say that they, you know, Sony doesn't have money. Now, Sony has about fifty billion dollars in reserve and is worth like two or three hundred billion dollars themselves, if I'm not mistaken. So, that being said, those numbers may be completely wrong, but that's not even that's besides the point. I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Here's the thing. Um. There's a lot of ramifications. The first things first. There's a lot of ex-bots uh, claiming that it's the end of Sony. <laughs> you know? And there's a lot of influencers on Twitter and uh, YouTube and everything else that says, oh, this is so great. I think Alana Pierce, the, the fucking whore, she basically says, oh, think about all of the needy children that can't buy games. This is so good. Then there's another fucking house nigga. I think I don't needy know children are more focused on being alive than playing video games. But right. So besides the point, then you have this house nigga, which I don't know. Some black ass dude looks like uh, was his Lance, uh, Lance Reddick? Is his name Lance? Whatever, whatever his name is. Anyway, he's been riding Microsoft's dick for a long time. Um, he wants to be on the right side of history by saying a whole bunch of shit. Anyway, let's get into it. I, cause I'm, I'm tired to talk about it, but if you don't know, I'm just going to hit the points cause I'm not going to sit there and talk about this shit all day. Uh, everybody else knows what's going on and uh, let, let's talk about the ramifications, the ramifications of Microsoft buying this parent company, Bethesda, essentially is that they're going to make it exclusive. They want to make exclusive content and that no one else is going to have it. But I, they already came out and said that that's not what their MO is. What their MO is actually is they get their services. And this is the head of Microsoft too. They get their services on all or on as much, you know, um, uh, 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 places as possible. That's, that's what they're doing. Uh, even if that's not the case, even if they were to back out of, they wouldn't back out of it. But if you wanted to make an argument that it wouldn't be a good idea, um, what this is really about is Game Pass. Now, Game Pass just did not have the content, right? Um, for gaming, I mean, for 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 people to actually buy. It. Now, they, Microsoft has been for a while sell on Game Pass for like a dollar or five dollars or twenty six dollars or thirty six dollars for like three years. And so the numbers are going to reflect that. I believe they said they are at now uh fifteen million, which has no context of how they got to that number. But rest assured it's because of these dollar uh uh content. And the reason now the reason why they want to do this is because again They've been trying to destroy the narrative for single player games. Am I right, Terry? Mm, partially. I, I would say there there is truth to that, yes. I would agree, uh, agree completely, but continue. Why wouldn't you agree completely? Just continue. Just continue. Go. So the reason why, and, and Microsoft honestly has never been in the camp of single player games. You know why? Because at first, when they first, you know, joined the video game market they wanted to sell a residual service called xbox live they wanted multiplayer games so people can continue to pay uh for xbox lives to have multiplayer content which set a precedent in the in uh in the industry 
Now you have Microsoft or Sony doing their shit, right? Uh, with, with PlayStation uh, Plus. Now the problem, you know, because people are like, what's what's wrong with that? Game Pass is designed to be that 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 service that you just you know mm-hmm. uh, could buy uh, essentially that service and get all these free games. But you gotta look at how Microsoft is operating. Microsoft is operating right um, off of games that thrive in microtransaction uh, environments. The only game that I could see that doesn't really, you know, uh, benefit from microtransaction would be Doom. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, since you're all things Doom, Terry. Um, didn't they? Didn't Bethesda try to do some shit with Doom? And it didn't go well, and they corrected uh, it. That the story you're referring to had to do with the anti-cheat software that they just kind of shoved into uh, uh, Doom on P. This was on PC. Uh, people were not very happy about that. So, but that's uh, that's probably what you're thinking of. Yeah, I think I'm thinking about that too. Now think about it. Bethesda does mostly MMOs, right? Mostly MMOs. Not MMOs, excuse me, uh, RPGs. So you have your Skyrim and you have your, uh, what's the other RPG that they have under their belt? They have the Elder Scrolls series, the Elder, they Elder have Scrolls. the Fallout series, and they have something else coming up called Starfield, whatever that's supposed to be. Which is probably, who knows. But either way you look at it, it's, it's, it's Bethesda has never been, has, has, as of late, not been good what releasing or with their games because the fallout 76 was that, is that what it was fallout 76 was a big mess um elder and, scrolls online that has been doing better but they have some pretty nasty uh aggressive like you know in terms of real world money and stuff you can buy like some of that shit is like super expensive but again with the micro transactions nonsense is that's what they're yeah, planning on doing well, the reason why, and, and just to let you know for the record, Game Pass is not successful financially. They're giving it away in hopes that it would be uh, adopted. And so, the reason why you got to look at this, you have to look at the bigger picture with Bethesda and, and this purchase, is that it's not about people buying games on Game Pass. Or, I'm sorry, buying Game Pass to have this Netflix service. What it is, is the Fortnite route. Games are going to be designed for microtransactions as a service, right? Live service. Almost all the games that Microsoft is going to have is going to be like that. And to subsidize the the amount of money that they're losing, they're going to make it up for with the microtransactions. Say I'm lying. Say I'm lying. You love it. Gears of War had microtransactions. A lot of it. Microsoft, it, it, that's all they know. That's all they fucking know how to do is microtransactions or to fucking bleed a, bleed a customer dry. That's so what they've it, done. It is an exceptionally uh, lucrative uh, business model if, if done correctly. Yes. So. Now, why was I incorrect before before I get blown off talk? Because there's a lot to talk about. I, I was not saying you were incorrect. It's I partially. I I do not agree that all their eggs are in the basket of eliminating single player games. So, most of them, but but not all. So, uh, what's your proof? Everything. Are you going to have a I discussion don't, I don't, I don't, or, I, or we, what? We, I don't think you want to have a debate on that right now. I think we're just talking about... No, I do want to have know. a debate. That's why I'm mentioning it. Well, I, I think it's it would be kind of silly to just kind of throw uh, single-player games out with a battle profit they've been if you look at, you know, the IPs you've had, um, you know, with the PlayStation. Um, now, I could be totally wrong and they may go that route, but I, I think you would have to be a moron to realize that, you know, single-player games are not profitable... And that they have no value. Uh, that's that's my argument. So. Now, Microsoft Phil Spencer has gone on record on saying this very thing: that single-player games are not profitable. 
It's what he's based. It's what he said. Well, mouthpieces can say dumb things. So, what PR uh, people are for? Doesn't matter, but it was said. And then Sony showed them up by showing that God of War sold what it sold, and then they congratulated Sony on that. And then they went into hiding for a while. And then Game Pass showed up. You know what I'm saying? The only way for Game Pass to be... The only way for Game Pass to be uh, lucrative is not by monthly subscriptions alone. The way that it would be lucrative is basically monthly subscriptions and in the microtransaction route. I mean, you, you, you do have to acknowledge that there are games out there that even though they're single player, they have some aggressive microtransactions. Like yeah, if you look at, Ubisoft uh, shit. Rage 2 and all the skins, if you look at Ubisoft, like for example, I, I said, you know, what was it, Assassin's Creed boosters for the single player? Like, what kind of shit is that? Because games, oh. are, ex games are expensive to make, and one of the two things is going to happen. If you niggas want Sony to follow the route of uh, Game Pass, then you're gonna ex you're gonna have to expect microtransactions. You're gonna have to. Those games cost way too much money, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Right? You mentioned this too. You said ID Software was, or you know, ID Technology, their engine was big, correct? Yes. The ID software is a very capable engine. It is. So ha having that in your possession, um, I'm not I'm not coming from the standpoint of you know doom and gloom is going to take over the world. I'm coming from the standpoint that you know you could have games that have the Microsoft exclusive brand attached to them, but you know being able to have access to a functional and an accomplished engine that has a you know a long legacy like the ID engine, um, that you know, at face value, that's, that increases their, you know, their probability of success, you know, in competing with Sony in the market overall, you know, when it comes to console games. So, well, they're not going to, they're not competing, they're not competing with Sony at all. Those games, that's, that's the whole thing about um, these Xbox. They don't know what the ramifications are for doing this. What's going to happen is this. We are, I've already said this before, that, um, the Game Pass model is not is not profitable. They're going to keep these games multi-platform, but have it, right? Um, but have these multiplayer games, you know, or, or multi-platform games on Game Pass. And all the money that they get from Sony or any other fucking person, all the money that they get from them is going to subsidize this Game Pass shit. And then their whole fantasy of, you know, everybody, you know, can play their games, you can rent their games, could come to fruition, you know, essentially. That's what's happening. Because by itself, subscriptions are too fickle. And with games costing the amount that it costs, there's no fucking way. There's no way that you can, that you can, you know, make a profit off of it just alone. You know, especially how much, you know, if you're going to go the single player route, it costs Sony 300, 100 to a 300 million to make. And if you're going to do full price for, you know, a Game Pass, $15, and you multiply that by 15 million people, what is that, like 80 million? Something like that? I forgot what mm -hmm. it was. Something around those. And that's if you keep it full price. And that's if you keep it at the price of $15. Um, a month. They are not going to keep it that low. This is only an entry thing, just like if you have cable packages. Seventy nine ninety nine for the first two years, and then it goes up to a hundred and twenty nine dollars a month. It is not something that is sustainable. Shit, Netflix was seven dollars, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Yeah, we can't do that." So just to let you know, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be uh first it was ten, it was seven dollars. And it was nine dollars, and then it's thirteen dollars. You know, and they're in debt on top of it. On top of it, they're in debt. It's not. It's not a lucrative thing. But what happens is this: um, 
they have the ability to, uh, you know, have a lot of eyes on them. Do you agree or disagree, Terry? I well, I I, I think, you know, there there is a lot of logic in what you're saying in that the Game Pass itself, that service cannot sustain itself. There has to be something going on, or there has to be something else going on monetarily um, to to sustain that model. And, and that is? You know, microtransactions, but to, to, to be specific, you know, turning more and more games into uh, a, a live service, like, like you used the example of Fortnite, um, that can be extremely profitable. You know, um, if done the if done correctly, um, as long as it's a semi decent game, um, and it's enough to you know keep people to play it for however you know a few hours a day, um, you know if you're coming out with all these cool cosmetics and and the way that you set up the market where, you know you kind of give people the illusion that oh hey this is on the front page it may disappear I can't find it whatever guy about now all that stuff, um, there's a lot of freaking money to be made if done correctly. So. If done correctly, and once you know shit, shit fades, you know the reason why Minecraft exists the way that it does is because it's a it's a creative platform where you can build shit. So. You know what I mean? That the, the possibilities are fucking endless if you can build things. Not everything could work like Minecraft or Fortnite, mm -hmm. for instance. Fortnite, the reason why it's lucrative, it's it's fucking free. It's free. The only thing you need is an internet connection and, and a working computer or device that's not Xbox because you have to pay it, Xbox Live for it, it. It does make me wonder, though, like, if they have plans or if they're in negotiations already with buying other studios. You know, because, I mean, with Bethesda, I mean, they're getting uh, Alpha Dog games, Arcane Studios, Bethesda Softworks, id Software, Machine Games, uh, Roundhouse Studios, Tango Gameworks. And then you have Zenimax Online Studios, which makes the Elder Scrolls Online. Um, but there's, you know, there, there, there's a lot of IPs. There's a lot of brands. There's a lot of names there. Uh, there, there's a lot of money they could make uh, if done correctly. Um, it's, it's not a doom and gloom thing. It just, I think, it just kind of, if anything, it shows that, um, you know, Microsoft, you know, apparently has the funds to more or less kind of brute force their way, uh, you know, to in the in, in, in terms of maintaining a presence in the console market. Now, one thing you need to be aware of, right, is that there was some insider information. Well, I wouldn't say insider, but it, it was some more information that kind of was shown to be, you know, to, to like. And this inside information or this information in general about Bethesda is that their titles were struggling in the first place. You had Fallout that sucked. You had the Elder Scrolls that was mediocre. It's not in a while or anything of that nature in terms of sales and subscriptions and things of that nature. You know what I mean? Um, what else do we got? What other RPG? Um, I mean, in terms of Bethesda, like, you know, you have the Elder Scrolls Online, you have the Fallout and Sky and the Elder Scrolls series. Um, you know, you have that, um, uh, what is it called, Starfield. I I'm assuming that'll be an RPG. I don't even know what it'll be like. Um, it, it would have to be an RPG at this point. So, um, but I mean, if you're talking about how those games have done, you know, Fallout has done pretty well, but 76 was a joke. I don't know what they were smoking when they came out with that. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online, um, it, it's doing okay. Um, it, it had a kind of a, a rough launch, but I say relatively speaking, it it seems like a decent MMO uh, that's not Warcraft. Um, uh, with Oblivion, uh, the not Oblivion, with Elder Scrolls, um, you know they've been working on the sixth one for so long. I, I think if you look at, you know, just just look at the sales, like. Skyrim has been remastered and resold like on everything possible. There's no telling how much money they've made off just that game alone. So if if the Elder Scrolls Six is able to build up the kind of hype and draw people like Skyrim did, um, I mean that's a huge money maker. 
you know, for Microsoft right there. So, um, yeah, but, but again, I don't know. But they may again, come out with another fucking Elder Scrolls 76 or whatever, and, and then, you know, then they wouldn't get any. But the rep- my whole point is the reputation for Bethesda wasn't the greatest. Even fucking Doom Eternal had some rough patches as well. So, Doom was the only single player game under them that was not suffering. It had some real quality that wasn't buggy. You well, know what I well, mean? Well, Bethesda Softworks, or the Bethesda, the, the not necessarily the game developers, but the publishing side, like, they have been pretty atrocious in terms of the kind of practices that they followed in you know, with monetization, with what happened with Fallout 76, uh, you kind of look at, like I said, with Elder Scrolls Online, uh, the Wolfenstein, uh, uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood, right? Wolfenstein, uh, New Order, New Colossus were pretty decent games, pretty fun. You know, they, they, now those were single player games, mind you. Um, but Man, the, the Youngblood is this co-op, Youngbloods is this co-op that's like, it has some RPG elements and it's got these microtransactions and, it, it just ended up kind of being a mess, honestly. Thing we, we you can clearly see that the publisher side has taken you know you know these decent games and have basically just kind of um, you know hit them with the ugly stick you know a couple times really, um, which is unfortunate. So I don't know if, if their kind of game plan if that's similar to Microsoft or is Microsoft going to do things a little differently. I don't know. No, they, um, they, but, this aligns perfectly with what Microsoft is doing. Microsoft is, they bought them for microtransactions. That's that's what they bought them for. This is like, and you can hide it with RPGs because of the, the, its nature. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So this is one of those things where they knew exactly what the fuck they were doing. This was a perfect purchase for Microsoft because it blends in with their agenda, and you know. That's what this is what they wanted. The thing is, there was a whole bunch of Xbox out there really clamoring over this. Just to let you guys know, it's not exclusive. It's not going to be exclusive. It's not going to be an exclusive thing. That's number one. It's they're going to keep it multi-platform. They're going to keep it multi-platform because you'll be a stupid-ass company not to would leave money on the table when you know that the PlayStation Five is going to be doing gangbuster numbers. And you get PC people that's going to buy uh, Game Pass to play this shit. Or Xbox series, the series is going to play, uh, is going to use this. How much of an impact this, is this going to have? I don't know. I don't think it's going to have a crazy amount of imp, uh, um, um, imp, uh, impact. You know? Then you got to look at it like this. How is this going to work for if games need to be removed you know what i mean eventually your 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 agreement runs out you have to re up on it or you lose it netflix was doing that too where you will there's certain things that they you just they didn't broadcast anymore so how pre tell is that going to work out for you guys These are shit that you. This is shit that you would need to think about. How is that going to work? You guys can sit there and say, "Well, you know, uh, you know, I, Sony think that it's all about." I thought everybody was saying that exclusives matter. Exclusives matter. Well, these are not exclusives. This is business as usual. Bethesda still operates off like it used to. You notice, know right, Terry? Say that again. When Bethesda is going to make their games, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's going to be still under Bethesda, not Microsoft Studios. Um, that is correct, but I I don't know. I mean, if Microsoft owns them, I mean, Bethesda, they Bethesda, Bethesda, don't they? Bethesda, sit this. It won't. They don't. You know, it's not going to have their name on it. It's going to be still Bethesda. Maybe another caveat with their name somewhere on it, but it's going to be Bethesda. Mm. So you got to look at what does all of this mean and to be honest with you seven i mean they 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 bought uh minecraft for two billion dollars and this is like almost this is like almost over three times over three times 
because they believe so wholeheart so wholeheartedly that they're going to get their money back. Mm -hmm. And it's because of these microtransactions, not what you're not with these subscriptions. Yeah. These these subscriptions are so hollow. They say, "Oh, we got 15 million." What does that mean exactly? 50 How did you get there? Was it was it full services or was it the dollar that you were that you were saying, "Yo, you can buy it for $1 for like 4 months or whatever the fuck you were doing?" $1. How did you how did you get to that number? No one's asking. And we all know that Game Pass is not profitable as it stands. So Phil Spencer knew his, his, his ass was on the line. And he proposed that Microsoft or Xbox needs to be multi-platform. This may be their way of exiting. So if, if Sony handily whoops their ass this generation... They can exit the market and still have that Bethesda ass money without a fucking console. So it's like a win 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 for them, you know? Mm -hmm. Does it matter to you, Terry, that they're doing this? Um, yeah, kind of. Um, it, it matters in that. You know, which I guess we'll wait and find out. Um, but obviously, like if, like the Elder Scrolls Six or the next Doom game or Wolfenstein or whatever, you know, um, even some of the stuff by Arcane Studios, you know, they, you know, they they do make pretty decent games. Um, if that stuff goes exclusive, obviously that would motivate people to go and buy an Xbox, you know, if they don't have one already. But that's um, not that's not the, that's not what they're trying to do. If that's not it's the what... case, then it's simply just. It's just kind of how big corporation business works in America. It's just one super big fish just devours the slightly uh, smaller big fish, you know, in the pond or the ocean or the lake or whatever. Um, so it's it just, I, I mean, in terms of what kind of effect it'll have on the games, I'm, I'm not sure. You know, like you said with Minecraft, like they bought Minecraft, right? But that's still kind of multi-platform, you know. Um, kind of. You know, um, with uh, with the you know obtaining Bethesda and and Zenimax or whatever you know they got going on there, um, it it really could just be like maybe you know maybe they feel like they can make their money back and uh, perhaps with you know some kind of strategy strategy of turning games into a live service you know they can make money. Um, so, I mean, it, yeah, it, it does kind of affect me in that I, I'm kind of concerned about how those games will turn out um, because, you know, Bethesda, what they've been doing to some of their games uh, have made things worse, you know, and made them less attractive things to, uh, you know, play and check out. And with the with Microsoft coming in and buying them, you know, the question is, is that will things more or less just stay the same and it's just Microsoft's getting some money out of it now or are things going to get worse because they have a different game plan on how they want to monetize, you know, those IPs? So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it is concerning to say the least. Especially so. since you like Doom specifically, you know. So, my thing yep. is this. At the end of the day, all this... It, it all this is is to give value to Game Pass as we clearly could see. And why do they want Game Pass so badly is the question that you need to ask yourself. Why did why do they want it so badly? It's not to fucking be consumer friendly for damn for sure. That's not what their MO is. Their MO is to make money. You know what I mean? If they can get you to buy their subscription service, remember that serve that that model or way of monetizing is not profitable. It's not. So that's the thing. Now, lastly, what I want to talk about is these Xbox. Like I said, this I sprinkled this and through multiple pieces uh, of this of this. Uh, um, of this 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 little video here. 
for one, before I even go in there, do you think that this is going to affect Sony to the point where they're going to do the Game Pass, or is Sony going to be pressured into doing Game Pass-like things? Uh, I, I don't think in the immediate timeline, not so much, but I, I, I am concerned that, you know, with with their acquisition of Bethesda, like, will they... Will, will through that acquisition will certain trends certain unhealthy and predatory trends when it comes to monetizations of games and, and making games as a live service you know instead of just a game you buy and play um, will that make those things more widespread more popular uh, um, it's not going to wait it's like someone has to take the hit you know like, it, it first started with EA and Ubisoft, you know, and they have gotten a lot of shit, right? But even though they've taken a lot of heat and they keep putting that stuff in their games, it's like, well, hey, they're doing it so we can do it, you know? And eventually it's like everyone else is kind of doing it. So, like, you know, that kind of power to critique, uh, like, an EA game and say, hey, you know, you guys, you know, are over-monetizing your shit. And no one's going to play your games because we have all these great games over here that don't do that. But instead, like, that's becoming more widespread in terms of gaming, you know, because everyone wants to make more money. So it is kind of concerning that it's a, it's a real possibility that those kind of uh, unhealthy and predatory trends uh, will become, you know, a mainstay and become commonplace and uh, be more prevalent. And, so. just to, and just for the record, if you're wondering, why is it a bad thing? Why is it a bad thing? Games are going to go up to seventy dollars. What? Why can't we rent things? Once again, it's not profitable. It's not profitable. Microsoft did not make money. Uh, what do you call it? Netflix did not make money. They are billions of dollars in debt because of that. It's not profitable. So you got to do things to get profit. Either having ads or something, some sort of monetization to make that work. Because it's not profitable. I can't say it enough. It's not profitable. Non-profit organization. And it's not a non-profit organization either. <laughs> so It'll be it, a 501c3. You Microsoft. know, <laughs> and, 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 you know, let's not forget that Microsoft really isn't a good candidate. They're not a good company to, to harbor quality their fucking operating system sucks you know what i mean uh everything that they're directly involved with with the exclusion which they're not directly involved with uh, of minecraft um they can still do what they want to do um uh, minecraft people but for everything else it's it's it goes to the shitter rare bungie fucking uh gears of war the forza series took well, a dip in quality one thing it, i'd like I to mean, point out Oh Mark, yeah, Microsoft Gears of War was like history, really. Uh, Microsoft has a history of having things that work or that people like, and then they keep messing with it. Like you, you know, with the example of the Xbox and its interface. You know, the you know the Xbox had a pretty useful, simple, effective interface. You know, and people were liking that way more than the X and B you had on the PlayStation. But it's like. They just keep adding these updates, and they keep messing with it, and messing with it, and messing with it, and eventually it's like they go from having something that people like to where people can't stand it, you know. So it's like e e even if there's they a have, reason, there's you know, a reason for that, though. You know, uh, as you stated, as you stated, like if they have like some exclusives like Fable or Gears of War or Halo that people like, uh, they end up just kind of screwing it up, you know, over time. There's so, a reason. There's a because because they're trying to make more money from it. You know what I mean? They took hate. They took gears, not gears of war, uh, Forza, and they started adding crazy ass microtransactions to it. You got, you guys got to realize that this. I mean, I get it. You know what I mean? It's a fanboy thing, and you know, there's the end of Sony and everything like that. But you got to realize that hands of Microsoft is it's not that great. You know what I mean? What they do, it's not. It's not. Point blank. Period. So. Instead of you really clamoring over bought IPs that were existing and, by the way, were struggling, they were really struggling. The reason why people like Sony and Nintendo is because they tried their best 
to innovate to make you buy it not use some existing IP and just be like well we got games now you didn't even build up to it you didn't even build your fucking empire you just bought it that's the problem with that shit you know um they're not doing anything to to move the industry forward other than make money you get games like Ghost of Tsushima uh, God of War was really fucking big the Uncharted even The Last of Us you know what I mean they're pushing boundaries so is Nintendo Zelda was a fucking open world game you know they're making Splatoon that's never that's never happened or existed Animal Crossing is another thing there's a certain passion to those games that you're not going to get from Microsoft because they're not interested in you know you know ha having passion they're interested in making money They'll keep doing the same thing over and over and over again just so they can milk their fucking cow dry. That's my problem with Microsoft. That's my problem with Game Pass. It's not designed for the consumer. I don't care what the fuck you say. Find out even if you disagree with me. You will find out. That, that's not what that's not their MO. So you can say that I'm damage controlling. I don't even buy Bethesda games really, other than the fucking Doom. I mean, I was never really interested. I've never played Skyrim before. Ever. I was never interested in it. So, and I'm definitely not interested in some buggy ass piece of shit. And I'm supposed to just accept it.